Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and all anxiety? The latest opinion polls for the first time put the Yes campaign in the lead on 51%, up from 39% at the start of this year, that risks dissolving the 300-year-old United Kingdom as to be decided by just as few as 4.5% of the British electorate in Scotland, as 91% of the British electorate have not been given any say in what happens to them by the incompetent politicians. Scotland is a great place to live in and visit that benefits hugely from the 32 billion annual block grant from England that after oil revenues of 7 billion and other taxes enjoys a net subsidy of 9 billion a year the loss of which would devastate the 160 billion Scottish economy. Scottish nationalists make much of Scotland's oil reserves whilst conveniently forgetting that North Sea oil production peaked in 1999 and has been in a downward trend ever since. Scottish Water's oil revenue amounts to 6 billion per year that is set against a block grant of 32 billion from England that after all tax revenues are taken into account results in a net subsidy of 9 billion per year to Scotland from England. SNP politicians repeatedly threaten to default on Scotland's fair share of UK national debt if the UK did not share the pound but amounting to about 120 billion pounds which given the loss of Scottish GDP of about 8% would increase UK government debt burden from 77% to 85% of GDP. However, the Bank of England has been busy monetizing UK debt that effectively cuts the debt burden from 77% to a constant 41% of GDP which I'm sure the Bank of England would maintain with more money printing whilst an independent Scotland would either default or be forced to find at least an extra 4 billion per year for interest payments all without the ability to print money which will be on top of the loss of the 9 billion annual subsidy from England. Alex Salmon's cunning plan is to effectively park a Trojan horse outside the Bank of England on Scottish Independence Day that would effectively allow Scotland to go on a deficit spending binge on a sterling credit card by printing debt without consequences of a currency panic but instead like a cancer would consume its English host over a number of years as the policy of sharing sterling would suck the financial lifeblood out of the British pound. However, Scottish nationalists' central bank sharing delusions are just not going to happen as two nations cannot effectively share the same bank account. The Scottish people should not be taken in by these blatant lies because it is just never going to happen. The bottom line is that the likes of Alex Salmon can continue to scream as loud as he wants about having the right to share the pound for the facts are that pushing this agenda to its ultimate conclusion would result in a UK referendum on whether a foreign nation should be allowed to share the British pound and associated institutions such as the Bank of England to which the UK people would overwhelmingly vote no. So what currency options are available to an independent Scotland? An independent Scotland 
could continue to use the British pound just as it could use any other major currency such as the dollar or euro but without the ability to print money or debt that would leave it with a black hole of at least nine billion pounds a year due to the loss of the English subsidy and without the Bank of England underwriting its banking sector which would greatly diminish in size as it relocates to the UK. Joining the Eurozone is going to go down like a lead balloon with the Scottish people given that it has proven disastrous for most of its members that remain immersed in an economic depression. Even if Scotland chose to join the Euro it could take as long as 10 years to achieve membership. Scotland could just print its own currency perhaps called the Scottish Pound that I'm sure the Socialist Scottish Government would soon start printing to infinity sending the inflation rate soaring. A small new currency would also be subject to about 1 billion annual transaction and conversion fees on imports and exports that would further accelerate inflation and act to prohibit cross-border trade. The most probable solution that the Scottish Government would implement is to bend over backwards for limited support from the Bank of England whilst it floats its own currency that it would try to peg to the British pound. Unfortunately currency pegs don't tend to last very long as they are soon targeted by speculators for huge profit opportunities that would within a matter of weeks bleed the newly independent Scotland's currency reserves dry even with Bank of England support. The bottom line is that an independent Scotland would be without a currency and hemorrhage capital putting it on the fast track towards going bankrupt Iceland style. My original forecast as of mid-February is for the British pound to trend higher during 2014 towards at least GBP 180 before the end of this year. However, as a consequence of the increased risks of a yes vote, the British pound has recently entered into a downward trend that targets at least 160. However, despite the opinion polls giving the yes vote the lead, I still see there being a less than 30% probability of a yes vote as the vast majority of Scots realise the huge subsidy that England pays annually for Scotland to stay within the Union so most Scots will likely vote no on September the 18th. This means that it is highly probable that following a probable no vote that the British pound will recoup all of the recent decline within a few short weeks and resume a strong rally towards my long-standing target of pound dollar 180. The uncertainty surrounding the referendum has resulted in Scotland's house prices stagnating whilst every other region of the UK literally booms. A no vote is likely to result in a strong rally in Scottish house prices as they play catch up to the rest of the UK whilst the yes vote will likely trigger a crash in Scottish house prices of at least 15% as a consequence of the flight of capital from a nation that will not even have a currency and I would not be surprised if by early 2018 Scottish house prices are at least 50% lower in sterling terms. The people of the UK are literally being sleepwalked towards the edge of a cliff, most completely unaware of the potentially disastrous consequences for not just Scotland but for what lies in store for the whole of the UK following a Scottish independence yes vote that would start the process of ripping apart a 300 year old entity of a united island of Great Britain. 214 has seen a whole host of news reports 
of the approaching Scottish independence vote galvanising agitants right across the UK for instance calls for Cornish independence at the southernmost tip of the UK to the northern and western isles wanting their own devolution from Edinburgh including their own parliament that sows the seeds for the balkanisation of Britain. The epicentre for the balkanisation of Britain would be Scotland that following a yes vote would soon start to disintegrate as it should not be forgotten that near 50% would have voted no. For instance the bordering regions would reassert their separate identity that is far more in common with the north of England than much of Scotland. Formerly known as the Kingdom of Northumbria that stretches from Edinburgh in the north all the way to the city of Sheffield in the south with Scotland soon splitting along nationalist and unionist regions wanting to rejoin the UK as, known, as Ireland had before. The Ukraine Civil War of 2014 should act as a warning of where Scotland could be following independence as in the wake of a fragmenting UK the domesticated docile politicians of today's Westminster would soon be replaced by those who would be willing to take extreme measures to hold together a fragmenting nation, especially as the loss of 41 Labour MPs would prompt a swing to the right. Whilst this is beyond people's comprehension today, then so it was for Ukrainians at the beginning of this year as to what would happen to Ukraine barely six months later. Despite the opinion polls now putting the yes vote in a slim lead of 51% to 49%, though when all things are considered, Scotland voting yes will be tantamount to the nation committing suicide. Therefore, the whole independence referendum game that Scotland plays every few decades is one of blackmailing England into both giving more powers, Devo Max, and increasing the amount of net subsidy that Scotland extracts from England that in public spending terms works out to an extra £1,500 spent per person per year. However, England has no choice but to continue to pay Scotland's annual ransom for staying in the Union as the consequences for the UK would be dire should Scottish independence actually happen as it would probably prove fatal for both Scotland and what remains of the UK resulting in economic and social chaos that would destroy much of what has been built over the past 300 years. So in my opinion Scotland will vote no to independence and yes to continuing to extract a Queen's ransom from Westminster. On the other hand if I'm proven wrong and the Scots like lemmings actually do leap over the cliff then September 18th should be taken as a strong sell signal to disinvest from the UK and to construct and implement personal exit strategies from the UK that I will write much about in the event of such a calamity. Yet for all, all